So first things first, um, I want to show you guys how my sunflowers doing. Um, you can see that the tallest one is a little bit over eight feet now. He has really sprung up. All the bad ones are, you know, have pretty much been pulled out. Um, the ones that were really eaten with aphids from when I, I left. So there's really nothing but uh, a few uh, leftover spots where the bugs have been getting them. And they're starting to grow back. The marigold here that's in the trash can is coming along really well. Um, getting really thick trunk. Um, and you can see it's starting to get a little flower head on top. So the other day um, I came out and there was a cat poo in this pepper. This pepper was on the table on the porch and I moved it. And this morning, apparently, someone decided to break my little baby. I do have um, some other sunflowers that are opening. Um, they are, you know, I don't know if you can see that one. I don't want to turn the pot just yet. Um, they're doing really well, so keep up the good work, guys. Now, this guy, um, he's growing a few babies on him. Um, this is a regular yellow crookneck, supposedly, but look at these leaves. They're kind of, I don't know, angled in. I don't know if my seeds got mixed up or what. You guys know how I mix stuff up. <laughs> Okay, so let's look at these peppers, which I've been saving these poblanos to show you. They were just teeny tiny little things the last time you saw. Um, they have been growing really, really well um, since I took the advice of some people to chop off the top. This tomato cutting um, used to be on the porch. He's got a cage around him now, and he has really rooted in, and he's growing himself. And then we have this guy. I've harvested so many cherry tomatoes off of this better boy, and it just keeps producing. This guy um, was attacked really bad um, by a few um, aphids before I got rid of the, the ant problem. And it's kind of not really been doing that well. It's, it has maybe one or two um, on it. So this is actually two tomato plants in here, which you guys knew that the last time. I have romas here, and then I have a couple of big boy slicers, which I've already pulled a few off that were really huge. If you saw my little 30-something second video of my tomato haul, you saw it in there. And I also have the same types in here, where I have aroma, and I have the big boys, and I really need to get in here and, and pull the more dead ones, the ones that aren't producing for me like I like. And I also have the same types in here where I have aroma and I have the big boys and I really need to get in here and, and pull the more dead ones, the ones that aren't producing for me like I like. These guys are still doing good. These are my uh, purple cherry um, tomato over here, the, the vines, um, when they get a little bigger, they'll go somewhere. I don't know yet. Might take them out to the Arkansas farm. I haven't decided. And this is a cutting that I showed you the other day. It's doing blossoms. My sacrificial beans, um, for this side of the porch are doing fairly well. Um, they only have a, a few dead leaves on them, so I think they're doing good. As you can see with this guy, this is what happens when you do not measure the gauge and the spacing of the wires that uh, you allow your husband to make a cage with. And he is used to counting out so many spaces and then cutting. So we're going to have to redo this cage. This is one of my uh, hybrid squash. Um, if you remember, I told you I was going to take out one of them, which you can see I just cut it out. That was the weaker of the two. So then there's one left in here, and it's actually flopping over the side of the porch. It's just that big. The squash mixed in with the beans is doing really well still. You can see it's got blossoms of its own, and these beans 
are hitting this side of the trellis and going up then I am going to chop them off at the top so that they can start filling out in here this tomato was just leaves and wasn't doing very well so I started him over I chopped him all the way down and just left a couple of growers kind of you know suckers that are sticking out the side there so he's starting over he might make it to fall but he might end up being inside a greenhouse look at my name while sitting in the chair going, when are you gonna finish this garden update so that I can work all right um, in this pot is my one squash that I left um, I took out the other one that was competing with it um, if you guys remember I told you that I started out with two or three and as they became stronger or weaker I took out the weakest ones so this guy um, it had my little baby and then my baby just kind of shriveled and, and died well it's got other babies now that are definitely definitely taking its place so it's uh, kind of big I'm proud of her now I'll have beans again that are over here and they're definitely attracting you know their share of the bugs um, not that it didn't help this squash leaf right there but for the most part the beans are doing their job um, this one is very slowly taking up this side this tomato cutting um, it has blossoms on it now it's been growing very well on this side and then the other cutting I put in here it's kind of growing um, not as tall but it, it's getting there and then of course the marigolds in the bucket there are, are doing awesome now my tomatoes and peppers my babies having babies my peppers are doing really well in this red bucket along with these tomatoes they're getting bigger they're producing more so um, I'm happy I'd already chopped them off previously and they've already grown back up to the top and this hybrid squash is the other one and I moved it over to this side of the porch so that it would get a little different sun so I can experiment kind of with shading and whatnot it's got a leaf hopper on it you better hide because the neem oil is a coming yeah it, it's kind of squished in this cage and you can see a couple of the leaves broke because Ed and I really did wait too late to put it inside one but um, it is what it is I see a hole kind of in that trunk there and I really hope that's not a borer I hate waiting so long to spray the tomatoes in my little Easter bucket are still growing um, they're gonna be transferred to something larger much later um, these purple cherry tomatoes they're starting to grow and and take on a life of their own these tomato babies are doing the same now here's a cutting that I took from my better boy as you can see he's doing okay in here um, the one that I put beside him has a little bit of fungus that I need to take off before it spreads and look at these cuttings this one decided he's gonna have a baby whether I liked it or not so I'm not sure how that's gonna stunt him but I bet it will and then these of course look at my carrot <laughs> there's one carrot in there the bush beans that are protecting this squash um, they're not really doing their job look how variated that coloring is on the thing poor guy he has to put up with me doing experiments on him there are some more beans I can harvest off of here but I want to dry them out and get the seeds um, I've recently cut this tomato off at the top so that he can start filling out which he started so that's good um, I've been doing a lot of drying of my basil leaves and they just keep growing and growing and growing. I basically will take my uh, scissors or whatever and I'll cut to where I see two or three, you know, or the two go this way and the two go that way and I make sure I don't cut um, below those so that they have a chance to regrow and they're doing really well. My cilantro is bolted which is good and I don't know if you can really see but there is a little bit of coriander there it's just not black yet and I'm not um, sure how long it's going to take to get it to where I can you know harvest those seeds but I'm really happy about that yes my squash in the bowl is still kicking kicking and, and screaming 
Um, it's putting on flowers every couple of days and uh, the bees are finding them. I don't really know what it's doing because I haven't really paid that much attention. I just water and fertilize. Now I've harvested a lot of the cilantro. If you guys remember the cilantro out of this thing was about that tall. So yeah, now it's starting to go to seed. Um, but yeah, I've harvested a bunch if you can see how thick that was. That was a lot of cilantro. My little carrots are doing fine back there. The Johanna is doing good. See a couple slug holes again. Oh, look, that's not a slug. You guys see what I'm seeing? Okay, so I see a wasp or something eating my stuff. They're not supposed to eat my stuff. I don't play with my food. Sorry, dude. It's me or you. And he's already eaten that whole section of leaf. You can see it's like a stick figure, basically. That's not happening. No, 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 that's not happening. And look at that pepper. So you guys look, check him out. He is dripping right now. He's already dead. So he was eating my leaves and he died eating my leaves. So the neem oil I sprayed on these the other day obviously didn't get washed off by that storm last night because he did. I hear buzzing. I heard buzzing behind me. I wonder if Billy the Bee is back. <laughs> Billy the Bee is back. <laughs> I'm not going to spray those flowers today. Dang it. So, okay, since I know now that I don't have to spray up here, I'm not going to risk spraying Billy the Bee um, since he's all through here right now with all these blossoms. I don't want to suffocate him with neem oil. I, I love bees. So I'll just get these tomatoes because there aren't any open blossoms here. I'll try to skip the sunflowers since they're all opening. I know he's glad he picked this territory. It is happening here. Bang, ba, bang, bang, bang. 